So, John. Tim. Especially for this show, I dug up and got permission to use an unused script from Maud. We we are going to... The SETI BIMCO players. The SETI BIMCO players are going to act out this unproduced episode. Well, the highlights. The lost episode. The lost episode of Maud. The lost episode of Maud. <laughs> so... I'm just going to set the scene here because we're going to act out the the ending, the highlights. Does that sound good? That works for me. So Maud, she put on a fundraiser for the ACLU. And her daughter, Carol, came to the party with a young friend. But little did Maud know that her friend was a member of the CIA. And he was there to spike the punch with LSD as the CIA did back then. I don't mm-hmm. know if you're aware of that, John. I am aware of that. Everybody at the party drinks this punch that's laced with LSD. And what happens is Arthur, their neighbor, he goes out in the backyard and just starts playing golf. And Maud and Walter are in their kitchen looking out the back window discussing a said golf game. Arthur's their neighbor, for those of you at home who never watched Maud. Uh, Played by Mr. Conrad Bain, who went on to fame as Mr. Drummond in Different Strokes. True. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so John is going to play Maude, and I'm going to play Walter, her husband. Okay. So they're they're at the window watching Arthur in the backyard. Arthur has all his clubs, Walter. He's carrying them himself. Thank God he's carrying a Maude. He's not wearing anything else. Who knew Arthur would be the one to invent naked golf? I just don't want to see him use the ball washer. Eventually, Arthur attempts to dig holes in the yard so that he can put his ball into one. But being that he's on LSD, he just keeps digging and digging until, surprisingly, he finds human remains. He calls Maud and Walter to see the bones. Well, the jig is up, Walter. That's my third husband. I killed him. But honestly, it was an accident. An accident, Maud. I accidentally stabbed him 27 times. 27 times, Maud. How was that an accident? I only meant to stab him once. <laughs> It's the SETI BIMCO Show, with your hosts, Tim and John. This show has been filmed using leftover special effects from the fake moon landing. Had B. Arthur had, 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 B. Arthur had the chance to perform that, she would have won her second Emmy for Maude. True. True. <laughs> True. I think Mr. Norman Lear himself wrote that. I think so. I think so. He, he might have had some help. But... No, no, I think it was all I think it was all Norman Lear. You don't think Truman Capote helped him out there? Oh, on. Truman, Truman Capote could barely get out of bed. He was on so much vodka and Percocet at that point. Right. He loved life. He loved life. Although I know maybe not. Well, John, this is the SETI BIMCO Show. It's episode 10, right? I was going to ask you. I think so. Yes. I hope so. I'm saying it's 10. I hope so, too. I think it is. My name's Tim. This is John. And uh, on SETI BIMCO, we talk with people about their past high school calamities or weirdness. And this week, we're very excited to have Adam Pittman, a writer, a director, and an actor in movies. In movies and on stage. Mm-hmm. Aren't you excited, John? I'm very excited. I have a lot of questions about the triangle. All right, me too. And I have questions about the sighting. Which I would have seen, but I couldn't, and I'll explain that later. Yeah, we'll explain that later. It was, it was Charlie's fault. Charlie, the tuba player from the SETI BIMCO Orchestra. From the SETI BIMCO Orchestra. You were, you were going to watch the sighting, but he, but he, he came got, by. He got, but he got celery tonic on the film. He did. Yes. Remember? Is that what it was? Yes. Much like in Tootsie, where 
the film editor had the celery tonic on the film and they had to go film the scene live. And then Dustin Hoffman does the big reveal. Was that Tootsie? That was Tootsie. Or was that? That was Tootsie. Or was that being? That was Tootsie. (laughs) (laughs) It was Tootsie. I'm thinking of, okay. It was Tootsie. (laughs) <laughs> which is the quintessential, which, is a, which is a quintessential New York movie. It just has such a New York feel to it, but yet not one shot of the New York skyline in it. Uh, is that true? It is true. Well, that's like uh, eyes wide shut. There, he didn't fly over here, Stanley Kubrick. He didn't want to come to America to film any of that. No. Did you ever notice when there? It's a set when he's walking around New York. Yeah. And he goes in to buy a costume and all that. Yeah. They do have one shot. It's just like they went and set up a camera up outside of Central Park. I think that came out the same time as Schindler's List, if I'm not mistaken. No. Yeah, it was about the same time. <laughs> no, Eyes Wide Shut. Was that? Yeah. Eyes Wide Shut was like, no, no, that was like was 2000. Like 90, no, that was like, I thought that was 92, 93. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. What am I thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking of that film where they played the Irish immigrants, Nicole and Tom. That's what I'm thinking of. Which one was that? You're thinking of... Uh, uh, was it called Far and Away or something like that? No, I'm thinking of Days of Thunder. No, that's where they met. I'm thinking of uh, The Firm. No. no. <laughs> it was Tootsie, Tim. It was Tootsie. <laughs> anyway. All right. What's, all right. Did anything right. happen this week, John? We got a big interview to do. Um, no, except I thought I was one of the undead for a while because I couldn't get my phone or my little handheld computer at work to respond to my touch. And I thought that I was one of the undead because oh. I'd either been attacked by A, a vampire, B, a werewolf, or zombies. <laughs> that has happened uh, to me before when it wouldn't yeah, work. Yeah, it's very Jean. scary when you think you're among the undead. Now, like the vampires, I think I could handle that. For some reason, that seems to me as that would, that would be kind of erotic. Or maybe that's what movies lead me to believe. I and I kind of get the zombies. You know, they need nourishment. I understand that. The werewolves, though, those bastards just kill for the sake of killing. Right, yeah. But, um, oh, and I have seen my, I did, I did finally see my neighbor who I thought had his organs harvested. I finally mm-hmm. saw him last night and I saw him twice today. So he's fine. Okay. Okay, that's it. I, I, was one, I, was one of the, I was one of the undead, I believe, <laughs> this week. And my neighbor did not get his um, organs harvested. That's my week. Great. That's mm-hmm. great. That's all you got. I don't have much either. I went to a, a show this weekend called Mocha. I was in to sell yes. my books. And and it's fun to do this. The first time I've been around a whole bunch of people. So I probably have COVID. I don't know. But uh, yeah, everybody wore a mask except for like two people walked through there mm-hmm. without masks on. And so it's fun but exhausting because you're talking to people for two days. Uh, they're there to see you. So it's fine. But at the end of the... Yeah. I got home Sunday night after talking to people for two days, and I said, Gene, where's where's the bottle of wine? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Turn on the TV. It's, and for medici- I, it's for medicinal purposes. Yeah, no, I get it. I don't know if, if I have to cut this stuff out because I the work I do, but bottle of wine, and then I was like, oh, we got a gummy. So Gene was the first to fall asleep. We were watching shows that she likes to watch. I'm like, well, you're asleep. And I think we'll just watch Maud because I have wine and I ate a gummy. <laughs> so the rest of the night I, I was sleeping and I'd wake up once in a while and there's like, and then there's Maud. <laughs> oh, there's another, there's another episode on I slept through. And then, the, and then you <laughs> so, wake up and they're on the third maid and you're like, man, I, I have been sleeping through these episodes. <laughs> so John. Yes. Tim. Enough of all this. Uh, let's introduce our guest. I'm very excited to have Mr. Adam. Hitman. Yay. Yay. Can you add some clapping here? <laughs> I have a theme song. We'll see oh. if it works. We don't have an audience. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, Adam. Yeah. I have a feeling that John and I are both... Uh, we can't wait to ask you all sorts of questions. Good. Uh, <laughs> well, I hope I can ask you them. <laughs> I will tell John that I met you because I was on tour for Fahrenheit. Right. Uh, and your, is it your mom? Your mom's involved with the big read. And yeah, big, she was that year. I, and and I'm, I'm wondering if she was part of the school board at that point. But yeah, your, so, your graphic novel was, was so she, yeah. headline 
of the big room. <laughs> and she was the person who coordinates and makes sure I have a place to stay and uh, drove me. Well, you actually gave me a car. I was like, oh, my God, you guys are giving me a car. Someone let me borrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we go get to the movie stuff, I want to ask you something that I know is not fun to talk about, but I'm a political Yes. Uh, junkie. Does Nick Spencer still live in town and uh, or is he Nick, hiding Nick, out? Richard Spencer. Richard, Richard, Richard Spencer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a he, we don't claim Richard. Richard is from Texas <clears throat> and he moved. Oh, here. is he? Yeah. He moved here about 10 or 11 years ago with his parents, I believe. Or his, his parents mom, moved here first and then and then Richard moved out here. His but mom yeah, owns a three million dollar vacation home, from what I read. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a and lot. Oh, yeah. But we, we, but we don't talk about what things are worth because that would be gauche. Yeah. Tim. <laughs> I know the poor guy can't afford a lawyer, so just well, ask. Him. Yeah, he's. There's been a lot of drama with Richard Spencer in in town. I mean, as as one would expect with a big yeah. neo Nazi, mm-hmm. <laughs> the head of the neo Nazi. Yeah. The face well, I of just, new neo Nazis. I looked him up on the Southern Southern Poverty Law Center website, and his whereabouts were unknown. That's why I'm asking. That was, yeah, that was ominous. Around. He he came into Coffee Traders, which is the local coffee joint, a few weeks ago, and um, one of my friends promptly kicked him out, which happens nice. here. Yeah. They, they often do that to him. So he okay. yeah he's not well liked. Hey, you know what? If the baker in Colorado can refuse to make the gay wedding cake, right? Then the office, the, the owner of the Nazi, the the owner of the coffee shop can refuse service to any neo Nazi. Right. Goes both you ways. Know, you know, my next door neighbor is Ryan Zinke. Do, does that name? Ring yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about. Oh, yes. Yeah. So Ryan lives right. He's his house looms over my house. It's like a castle. Now who's and he? Ryan Zinke to... was the Secretary of the Interior under Trump. Oh wow! And he got into some trouble and has been in yeah, really in of trouble. Oh yeah, <laughs> and he's he's a very nice neighbor. We don't agree That's politically, good. but he is a nice neighbor. So All right. there you go. But, anyway, on to movie stuff. Yeah, good, John. You, John, you want to ask? Uh, I talk so much. I talk over John. I feel bad. Well, no, it's okay, Tim. You know, it's all right. Originally, it was the SETI Bimco show with Tim Hamilton and co host. <laughs> so I had to speak. Eventually, one day, I'm going to download the latest episode of the podcast. It's going to be the Tim Hamilton show. With right. No mention of me. <laughs> like, Stevie Nicks, like Stevie Nicks on Whenever I Call You Friend by Kenny Loggins. He did not credit Stevie Nicks on that song. I'm going to wind up the same. Anyway. That's all going to get edited out, by the way. Um, right. No, I was very no. I Tim sent me okay. You know this podcast is about embarrassing stories, and this is a slightly embarrassing yeah. story because Tim says, "Watch this film. It's called The Triangle," and I'm like, "Okay." okay. So normally, when I when I watch something related to the podcast, I'll do a little research on the person and the. And it's just been one of those weeks, so I just like went right to the film. Good, and uh, I'm wa- and I'm watching <laughs> it, and I'm thinking this is an incredible documentary. And I'm watching <laughs> it, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, how would I fictionalize this? Because I think I always saw like one of my favorite nonfiction books is Helter Skelter by Vincent Bugliosi, mm-hmm. and I always think like. You could not have made that story up. There's no fictionalizing that. Like if right. you were doing the elevator, uh, the elevator pitch to sell Helter Skelter as a work of fiction, the executive would press the button for the next floor and say, get out of this damn elevator. Nobody would have believed it. And I'm like, there's no way you can fictionalize it. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. And then suddenly, and not giving too much away on the film, but when everybody's tripping, and I'm thinking, Gosh, this camera operator or somebody who's tripping mm. is really maintaining control over the camera. And then, like, you know, the high pitched squeal in the in the yeah. um, in the cave. And then all of a sudden, Sierra, they have the footage and she goes into the cave and you know, and there's that flash. I'm like, okay, wait a second here. Either this is an incredible film, or I am one of the most gullible people in the world, or maybe it is a but John, I read in the trivia that they 
actually took hallucinogenic drugs for that scene. Is that true? Yeah, we, we actually did. Yeah, okay. we did. Oh, and wow. it, even, the per- even the person operating the camera? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was me. Oh, wow. Oh. Um, it was oh, me. And well, kudos to you. A couple other, a couple yeah. other guys. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting movie because it was a, it was really so experimental. And the idea behind it was that we, you know, I, I raised some money for it and then um, had this idea to do a cult documentary. And this was before the sacrament and all of these other cult documentaries or, you know, mm-hmm. found footage type found cult. footage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, right. so we had this thought, this idea, we thought it was great, but we didn't have a lot of money. And, but what we, what we did have is a great actor pool in Missoula, Montana. And I had a friend who was friends with all of these guys and, and I met them and I was like, Oh my God. I mean, the talent is, was crazy. So, and I'm, you know, and I, then I met Rizzo who was the kind of the cult leader in the, yes. in the film mm-hmm. and his wife who is, uh, Lily. And then, um, yeah. So, so this big group emerged and we thought, well, okay, we have this group. Why don't we give them the money and tell them to go build a cult out into, out in Eastern Montana, <laughs> out in the deserts of Montana yeah. and, and come up with a story. And us as filmmakers, me and Adam Stillwell, who's one of my high school friends and David Blair is my college friend. We, and then Adam Cotton, three Adams, um, is, was doing sound. We'll go discover this story. We'll go to this place, never having seen it, and uncover whatever mystery it is. I was going to ask you if a lot of what they talked about was ad libbed. I had that feeling. Yeah, that so kind of what it was like. Yeah, and and I I had met some of them, but I hadn't met all of them, and I really tried to limit my exposure with them so that uh-huh. mm-hmm. it would be as authentic as possible. Is that um, so? Like, I, I, that, the line I love was "put this douche on a, a leash." And I was, thinking, <laughs> that, was that was that an ad lib line? It, it just sounded out, like it oh came yeah, out of nowhere. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. So and, did you? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. No, no, no. I well, yeah. It was a uh, a lot about it was successful. I, I some of it was a failure too. So it was a really interesting movie, and and. Looking back, there are things that I would have definitely done differently, um, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't regret any of it. I think it was a really cool idea, and as far as any of the movies I've made, it's the one that c- critics really like. Mm-hmm. They, I think it's just because it's so different. Um, the average viewer, it's about fifty fifty, but um, critics seem to really enjoy that movie. So, yeah. So I, I think ultimately it was a success, but. It, it's strange. It's a strange trip. Yeah, I thought I thought we were going down a, a Wicker Man road at first, sure. and then yeah, I thought then very, it very like a Blair Witch Project, or yeah. Um, and kudos to the actors, by the way, for because if even one of them for one millisecond had like deviated one iota, the entire thing would have fallen apart. Yeah, it was pretty. I mean, kudos amazing. to them. Yeah, we lived it. I mean, it was a hundred and fifteen degrees every day, and. We I was going to say, it, it, it looked a bit exciting. miserable. It was miserable, and, and we were living it. I mean, we were eating with yeah. them, sleeping out in those yurts. We were the, Those yurts the, looked hot. They were hot. It was brutal. And, and the closest you know, house was probably oh, 15 miles away. Mm. And was the fire real? I, I don't think fire, you had the budget yeah, to start yeah, a would, fire. It just, sure, sure. We would just jump on any opportunity that would happen. So, yeah, there's a yeah. fire out in the field. Oh, we're, let's go fight the fire <laughs> with the locals. Hey. There you, go. you don't have to hire anything. any teamsters. Yeah, right. It was a SAG production. I remember that. But there was no no one was going to come out and check on us out in the right. where no. we, they couldn't even get there. We, we, were deal, with, with, we, we deal with SAG a lot around here. Yeah, the right. SETI Bimco production. Right, right. But I we bet. won't get into that. <laughs> Can't waste time. Yeah, yeah. So, that, how about the two movie. women? How about the two women in the bar in the beginning? Where'd you find them? They they work at the bar. They I had a feeling that bar, bar was real. Yeah, yeah. yeah real. Maybe that's. I think that's where I started thinking. Okay, this is a documentary because I was like, 
where did they find these women? There's no way you could have hired actors to play that role. Yeah, yeah there's, a, <laughs> there's a small town called Winnet. And like the po- I think we went in the post office and we said to the guy, hey, do you know about the group living out here? And he said, oh, yeah. You, you know, he just he didn't know what we were talking about, I don't think. But it, it worked for the movie and he was such a character. So, um, and there are cults nice. out in that area. Um, so, yeah, did, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you... Um, since we have so little time. Uh, I did want to ask you, because somebody on our, sh- a guest on our show asked this, when when did you, I guess the question is, when did you see a movie that you were, you knew you wanted to make movies or was it a horror movie you saw that you wanted to make horror movies or? Uh, no, you know, I think I I wanted to make movies when I was a, just a kid. I was always okay. just... So you have uh, some eight millimeter films in or you're, you're younger than me. So no, I, I, I have some VHS yes, okay. uh, movies that I, I made with friends, but um, no, I, 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 a movie that really stands out in my mind was Jurassic park. That kind of was okay. just mind blowing. And I remember some mm-hmm. kids around me talking and making fun of it. And I was just completely enthralled. And, yeah. and I, you know, in high school, I was not going to kegs and parties. I was staying home and watching Alfred Hitchcock presents and oh yeah, me too. Ray Bradbury Theater yeah. and USA <laughs> yeah. Up All Night or whatever. You know, yes. oh, I forgot I about have, USA they, Up All Night. Didn't they have Saturday Night Horrors or something like that on USA too? And it was always a terrible horror movie. And right. that was my joy. That was what I loved to do. So I, I it was never a doubt that I that I was going to be in films. And I mean, and, and, you know, I got my bachelor of fine arts in acting. So I went to, I moved to LA out of college to act and then decided I really enjoyed being behind camera way more Mm -hmm. and working on movies and directing and editing. And well, because you, uh, you and your friends, uh, there's a lot of names here. Nathaniel (laughs) Peterson on um, the sighting you, you, you all, I think three of you directed and three of you produced and you all acted in it. Yeah. And especially with, we just kind of share everything, you know, cause we're all mm-hmm. doing, ta- doing all the jobs. So, so you're not, you're not like fighting each other about how to direct it, I guess. No, it can no, happen. I would, I would say not. Um, and yeah, I think I, I, I've moved into a place in my life where I'm trying to get some projects going where I'm with by myself or mm-hmm. with, you know, where I, hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to direct, but I'm producing and writing and it's my name. Um, j- just cause it's easier. It's easier to organize, it easier to get, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you're not dealing with all the different personalities. So, um, so that's where I am now. I'm, I'm working towards a really cool film. I hope I can, I, I've been working on it for five years and it's it's called Night of the Grizzlies, and it's a it's a famous book from the uh, I think it was released in 1969, and it's fantastic book, and it's and it's a true story. Okay. And okay. two young women that were uh, employees in Glacier National Park were first of all, let me preface this by saying there there had never been a deadly bear attack in any of the parks since their inception, since their creation in 1911. Mm -hmm. So in 1967, on August 13th, two young female employees were mauled and killed by grizzly bears in the same night in separate areas of the park by separate Mm -hmm. bears. So it's a, it's an incredible story how it happened. And, and the chances of something like that happening are one in a trillion. It's just, unheard of and so Mm -hmm. but but when you start to dissect it which he does in this book you realize how it's building how humans have habituated bears for all these years by feeding them and and Mm -hmm. kind of letting them get away with with coming into you know uh human situations and us infringing on their land as well and so it was inevitable, but it, it just so happened that in, in the same night, these two young women were killed. So anyway, I, I, I got the option to the book and I, I wrote a screenplay and I've teamed up with, I have a really good team and I kind of the, 
the fire behind all of this is that I sent it to J.K. Simmons about three years ago, and he loved it and attached. So he so he's going to be the nice. lead when eventually it gets made. Is he, well, which which grizzly will he play? He's he's <laughs> gonna, <laughs> yeah. We'll Sorry. we'll have to find a good suit for him. <laughs> Of course, a big yeah, star so like anyway. J.K. Simmons, he's going to want his own knight of his own grizzly. So it might be knights of the grizzly. <laughs> Ironically, you, start getting these, you get these big names in it. You got to start changing things around. <laughs> right, right. He is a he is a big U of M fan from and who they're the Grizzlies, the Missoula Grizzlies. Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. He, talking you'll sports now come on oh, well, when i automatically thought you meant michigan i was like oh, wait no that's the wolverines wait a second here he's he's a montana guy <laughs> he's a montana guy okay yeah yeah so he's, yeah. he's a marvel movie guy so he's i a, hope i hope you can still get guy, him he's a marvel guy he's an everything guy he's a yeah. state you saw you, you saw whiplash right i think i've asked you this mm. i love that movie yeah, what am you're i not talking, talking about? To you're not talking to me okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm talking to you too john Oh, yeah, it's, talking to both of you. Don't, it's don't one, one of my top him. ten films. I I started going through them the other day, and it's it's up there. God, he was such a bastard in that movie. Yeah, yeah. he was well, such what, a what, bastard. When I met him, I was just geeking out, and I said, "Okay, can I can I just talk to you about Whiplash for ten minutes? Then we'll get into the script." <laughs> and he said, "Really, yeah. nobody's ever asked me about it." <laughs> well, what I thought was interesting is he comes off as such a sociopath, but he's not. Clinically, I mean, if you look at the clinical definition of a sociopath, he wouldn't have cried when his when his student commits suicide. There's moments where you notice that he does have a depth of feeling. So, mm-hmm. I, so I asked him about that. I, for, I forget what he said. I was pretty starstruck. Oh, <laughs> you know, he was hanging. Yeah. <laughs> pretty enamored. But anyway, well, yeah, Adam, so, I, I really, I wanted you to know, I really love the sighting. I think it's a great screenplay. Um, I don't know. If, uh, well, you're you're involved with the writing of it. You wrote it. You were in it. You yeah. co-wrote it. I guess I don't want to. But um, yeah, thank I you. I thought Let's... I'm, I'm going to talk about it as if if anyone's listening to this and doesn't want spoilers, they should go rent it. Uh, it's I don't know where you all the places you can rent it. I rented it four years ago when you told me it came out. Yeah, um, it's on video it's, on demand. It's it's on uh, Vudu and Amazon okay. Prime and all the places. Yeah. Well, come back here after you watch it if you don't want spoilers. But, you know, when I watched it and you uh, you kiss your love interest at, in the, the beginning of the movie and you make that face, I was kind of like, has he got some strange acting thing uh, going on here? What's happening? And then the end of the film, it's it's all part of the plot. You would, like, notice she had nicotine on her on her yeah. breath. And I was like, oh, it all comes together. There was a lot of great stuff, like the car alarm that you joke about, and that's the thing that scares away the, uh, maybe, the Sasquatches. Right, uh, right. but sure. uh, anyway, yeah, and you had that little homage to uh, Psycho at the end when <laughs> she dies in the shower. But yeah, we did. Yeah, I that's, thought that was a, that's a great film. Um, okay. I'm not just saying that because you're here. I really, I really yeah. enjoyed it. I the only though, the only little thing I talked to John about this. It's supposed to be a party at the beginning with high schoolers. So yeah. I realize you cannot shoot a topless high school girl without being creepy and going to jail. But the woman who is topless, I'm like. Well, she looks kind of like she's a Playboy model. She's not a high school student. <laughs> Definitely, not. Definitely not. Well, thank you. You're you're one of the few who likes it. So. Really, I, I don't understand. That's that's a really good film. Uh, no, thank you. I I appreciate that. I um, th- we've had a rough road with with the sighting because it originally was Paper Dolls and it was did really well in festivals and then it ended up we ended up getting a distributor in 2015 that came on board and they really uh they did a new edit they lost half the sound effects and and just distribute distributors get to do this re-edit yeah they they just took control we didn't know we didn't have a lawyer we didn't have a uh entertainment lawyer they just they prey on people that have movies and so they took the movie and did a new edit they put in new music and lost so many sound effects that aren't there a door will open and you don't hear anything there's credits there's, that are missing they're still missing you mean the, yeah, the version still, i'm seeing yeah. yeah 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 and and we can't find them they're gone we <laughs> oh, uh, that was gonna we be my question i said does anybody have the original cut still no i mean i do i have a dvd of it i have an you know an old version on my computer but that, that's um, so it's, it's hard to put sounds back be, in isn't it 
hopefully we, yeah. And I, you know, I don't know where those files would be. So yeah, that was, that's kind of a bummer. The fact that I'm glad it's out. I'm glad people can see it, but it's not the version that I wish people were seeing. Well, see if you didn't tell me, I, I I never noticed anything really like wrong with it. So, okay. Well, I love the, did did you storyboard it? Did you have an artist? We did. We, uh, oh, we storyboarded it. We, we were pretty, you know, that was kind of, we did a movie in LA called roulette that we made for $500 that we did just with my friends. And we Mm -hmm. had our video cameras from Costco and we went out, it was just a total passion project, labor of love. And we did every aspect and we, you know, it was kind of like going to film school, Mm -hmm. um, in a year. And we released this movie and that's how we got some money for, for paper dolls or the sighting. Um, so, but you know, the sighting was the first movie that was, it was our freshman film where we had a real crew and we're figuring it out. And our director of photography sat down with us. He, he drove out with his truck full of equipment and he said, all right, where's your storyboards? And we were like, uh, Oh, you didn't know and, <laughs> to and do he, that. And he said, all right, well, let's sit down and do them right now. So we went through, he, we sat down and four hours later we had storyboards. Oh, that was quick. Cause we had it all in our minds, but, it was just but you had some nice shots. I like the shot where the car you when you stop the car and first see them and the camera comes around and it comes into the back of the car and you, Yeah, you, yeah, you we, see had, them. we had certain ideas a, a lot of times with that movie. That movie we had $360,000 was our budget, which sounds like a lot, but for a movie it right. I we thought it was a, a tremendous amount of money and quickly <laughs> found out how little it was. Uh, especially we we shot the thing on 35 millimeters. So it was, um, that, that was, I think a hundred thousand dollars was the camera rental in the the film. Right. So there's a 30 year budget. Then you spent a hundred thousand on M and M's and next thing you know, that's the beer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm We got, we got a lot of free beer actually. Um, Oh, really? You did. Yeah. We just, we called Missoula and said, Hey, we're making a movie. Can you lend us some, product placement and they said sure I and mean, they sent us Great. so much beer which was wonderful but um anyway oh, I, we had oh. to we had to cut a lot of shots where we we had grand ideas and we'd say okay yeah. we don't have time or the money so we gotta move on and i would like to know uh you know the scene where the man shows the film of being in the classroom and he's talking to the students like i here's my theory yeah. was yeah. that an homage to that terrible film curse of bigfoot no, no. Do you know? No. Do you know this movie? I, I haven't seen it. No. Nope. Oh, it's I terrible. Can't. I don't think you could sit through it. It's it's two movies <laughs> with footage from the fifties and seventies put together, and there's a man in a classroom with a brick wall that looks very similar, wow. and he takes his students out looking for Bigfoot. And of course, let's he finds just say them. yes. Let's say it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. We will end it out with no and yet because I think yes is a much more interesting <laughs> answer, Adam. Yes, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Check out that movie sometime. Yeah, I don't think you could watch it, but I, uh, I have trouble with bad movies these days. I, yeah. I just kind of yeah. I there was you know all through my high school years that's all I would yeah. seek out, and now it's I, well, I feel well. Like there's I bad and there's like they didn't have a big budget and it's still kind of like uh, an idea there that's fun. I don't know, like right. Yeah, you'll, well, you'll, we'll come, escape, back, you'll escape. come back full circle. You'll come yeah, back full you, circle. Have you seen? Um, <laughs> have you seen? Now we're, at the, now we're at the age that we're watching the bad movies again. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Have you guys seen Psycho Gorman yet? Not yet. Not. I've heard good no. things. Yeah, that's that's one of those that is. It, it was pretty low budget, and it's just fantastic. It's as, okay. as good bad as it gets, and but but you know, in the way like Slither is good bad, you know, like, right? Just the best it's so fun so fun to watch uh i was gonna say a movie like escape from new york he didn't have a huge budget for that but there's a a whole idea and a lot of heart behind yeah. that movie and a story and i can still enjoy watching that here and that that shines through i didn't get to ask john did you get a chance to watch the sighting john i quiet. didn't because i was going to watch the sighting after i watched the triangle but then when <laughs> i realized that the triangle wasn't a documentary, I actually had to go back and watch the triangle all over again, <laughs> realizing that it was a piece of fiction. So I didn't, as I said, this was a week. So no. So the time okay. I would have used to watch the sighting afterwards. And the one I want to see is your musical is canceled. The musical. Oh, yeah. that's the one I really want to see. Oh, that's, that's good. That's really good. I, I didn't have much in 
in the way of creative on that. I, I did the editing and I produced, but okay. my friends wrote that and, and did the direction, but that's fantastic. This, the when, music, when is that out? Um, it's out. It's on Voodoo. I'll send you guys a link. Okay. But, but I, I don't I, mind paying. I want to pay for your stuff. Yeah. I'm an I'll, artist I'll send, like you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'll send you the link then to the Voodoo where you can pay to watch it. I think it's like $15 to rent or something. Mm-hmm. Because I do want you to know that whoa, I, I didn't pay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Abba, the, mov- <laughs> Abba the movie was only $11, Adam. It was. Jeez. <laughs> Abba, the biggest selling pop group of the 70s, only charges $11 for their movie, man. Well, that was in the 70s. <laughs> Times have changed. We're up to $15 now. <laughs> Inflation, you know. I had to watch Abba the movie in French. I couldn't afford that. The dubbed French version. <laughs> <laughs> a new print is coming out next next month you know where i'm going to be may 12th <laughs> and and really i think my first movie roulette that's probably one of my favorite probably is my that, favorite movie that i've made it's it's just on youtube oh i'll check it out I didn't, i'm okay. sorry i didn't know that was on youtube i would have yeah, watched Bad that Fitter films roulette and it's you know the the quality is ridiculous we did all the sound in post Mm-hmm. It was just a mess, but well, it was a learning experience, is, though. What's that? Yeah. I said it was a learning experience. Though. Oh, totally. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Film school. It was film school, and I love yeah. that movie. I think yeah. if we okay. remade that, it would be a pretty big success. So, mm-hmm. I want you to know that the sighting is. I paid for it four years ago, but it is on YouTube now. I don't know if you go around and like take oh, down totally. free stuff. Oh, it's on, no, it's on YouTube, and someone's making a lot of money off of it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he wrote and said, "This is a terrible movie." He said something oh. like, this is a terrible movie, but, you know, I wanted to post it. And I was like, hey, man, if you're going to take it for free, just at least say something that's <laughs> out. Yeah, you really, come on. Yeah, you know, that's the proverbial I, I, salt in the wound. I have a, I, you know, they give you the opportunity to report them if they don't right. own the license, but I don't care. It's out. I want and people you, to see it. You got Gil Gale in there from Deadwood, which. Gil Gale. Was, yeah, Gil Gale. Yep. I don't know if He's, you. Uh, bugged him about deadwood much but oh i did anyway. yeah we, we yeah. He, he, he was, yeah he was a good friend of mine so, okay yeah. and yeah. if you catch frank oz in the right mood on the right day he'll do the yoda voice <laughs> <laughs> he heard that episode oh did he oh okay cool <laughs> i did okay do we need to get into the embarrassing stuff yes and may i just say um, in advance unless- adam if this story involves you having a dream and taking off your clothes and walking down the street naked and bursting into flames. I'm leaving. Uh, <laughs> that is it. That's my story. Oh, okay. So. I'm sorry. I got to go. <laughs> so basically the climax of the triangle is Adam's embarrassing high school. Well, thanks for joining us, Adam. <laughs> yeah, Coming. It thanks, was Adam. a pleasure that to have you talk here. To you later. Hey, all movies <laughs> come from real experiences. So <laughs> I they will do. say another thing about the the triangle that's interesting is there are dinosaur bones everywhere out there. Really? Was that real? I, I meant have, to I've ask heard you. that. No, I've no, no. The, the, the T Rex skull they made out of paper mache, but okay. the we found bones. I mean, you'd find them. Yeah, really? Like, yeah. I thought yeah. there'd be a law that like if you find dinosaurs, you got to call up. Somebody. You're supposed to. There were we we had a great conversation with that didn't make it in the film with the couple ranchers that said that they if they find dinosaur bones they destroy them because they what? don't want yeah because because if they call the government oh. and let them know then suddenly they're an excavation site oh yeah God, it's government prop, it's government property so mm. wow. they will they'll just pretend they'll rebury they, them or destroy and they, them. yeah they're, no they're just trying to cover up. Evidence of evolution. Right, right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Before we do your story, because we got a little bit of time, I just, I guess I want to know what, people get to be producers on so many things nowadays. I see famous people do it. I think to myself, oh, you just want to make some more money without acting. But what do you do as a producer briefly? Because I often am not even sure. Right. I have a vague idea. Well, there's different various producers. There's there's the executive producer. Generally, the executive producer is the money behind the the production. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you have the producer. The producers 
you know, you could give somebody a producer credit that gets a lot done to make sure that the movie happens. But, you know, a producer is kind of the glue that holds the whole production together. They're making sure that everything is running smoothly, Mm -hmm. that the money is in the right place. The schedules Mm -hmm. are in the right place. And, and, and they work with all the other producers. There's a line Mm -hmm. producer that's in charge of, of, um, budget and schedule. Um, but a producer has their hands kind of in everything and, and it varies too. um, how much, um, a producer, how much a producer actually works for the, works for the production. Some producers are totally hands off and they make a few phone calls, maybe get a few actors attached. It sounds like a a nightmare job to, to wrangle everybody. Well, and and I think that traditional, the more hands on producer is all, that's something from the studio days. Like for example, Irving Thalberg worked for MGM. So Irving Thalberg would make sure that, I guess he'd delegate a lot of responsibility, but as Adam was saying, just that glue that holds the whole thing together. Yeah. And for, for like, I'm, I'm producing Night of the Grizzlies and I'm going to be on set every day and be right. very involved. And hopefully uh, the directors I'm working with have, you know, really value my input creatively too. So, um, so, so, yeah, so, so will you well, make the, de- will you make the decision that if, uh, if Mr. Um, Mr. Oh, J. Uh, Simmons, Mr. J.K. Simmons, if if yeah. he doesn't want to play a grizzly, uh, will the will you as a producer say, okay, it's going to be a CG grizzly yeah. bear? Yeah, and you'll be like a possum or a raccoon or something. Yeah, right. yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. I think that's how it works out. That'll too. be my decision. I think I think that's how I think that's how it's going to fly, Tim. Yeah, you're absolutely right. right. Yeah. Do you know Do you know at this point, or can't you say whether it be like CG or real grizzlies? Uh, I've thought a combination. Of, it's going to be a combination. I think I look at. I've been thinking a lot about it, and I've recently kind of given the reins as director to a group of to two guys who have done a really great films that uh, Alex and Andrew Smith, they've, they've done some, some great movies. And um, I've thought about it a lot. It's, I, I think when you use practical effects mixed with CG, that's when you get the best results. Yeah. Um, so. And I look at movies like annihilation did it's, I mean, the oh, visual yeah. effects mm-hmm. in that movie were insane. And I, I think kind of a mix between puppetry maybe maybe even a bear suit with cg real bears mm-hmm. and and cg cuz even in the revenant which was probably one of the greatest bear scenes of all time there's still the uncanny valley you know that phrase have you heard that yeah. phrase oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah that feeling a little bit just that it was lacking the weight of a you know of a how a 500 600 pound grizzly bear so the, the greatest bear scene did, did you see prophecy <laughs> prophecy no I, okay so john, a, john do you know what i'm talking about i know what you're talking about it and was a, then, a, mu- a mu- mutated bear movie yes, it was like 1979 yeah, yeah no i remember that i remember that none of them hold a the candle though to the greatest <laughs> bear in film history okay yogi see. bear yogi <laughs> bear <laughs> hey bro, how about a chicken <laughs> basket I got a great Yogi Bear voice. I just want to do my Yogi. Hey, hey, bro, oh, you want a picnic basket? That's my that's my favorite cartoon voice. <laughs> he does a great snuff well, off. Yeah, too. so maybe that makes me think maybe we should just do animation. There just you not, go. Not CG. Right. Just animation. There you go. There you um, go. Check out Prophecy. It's not a good movie. What you just Earth? said you're not you're not good with these not good movies. That was yeah. um, the last not his last movie. Uh, the, the Frankenheimer. He directed that. Huh. Jonathan Frankenheimer? Yeah. Frank, well, wait, who, the man who did Manchurian Candidate. Who was that director? Yeah, there was Frankenheimer, yeah. Yep, he, he did this movie, and it's it's very bizarre. Bizarre musical choices. Um, the giant bear is not fantastic. Anyway, you didn't see it, so you're... Grizzly 2 I, just came out. <gasps> what? No! Yeah, Grizzly 2, and it it was the like the greatest movie never made or something, or... It it was it was filmed in the seventies. Wait, and, and it never came out. And it never came out. And they just released it. Um, Gravitas Ventures released it. I'm pretty sure. And it's starring George Clooney. Uh, the cast oh. is insane. It's an insane cast. It's awful. It is. I think it's the next movie we're going to watch. Uh, yep, Grizzly Two. Grizzly <laughs> Two. <laughs> the think, movie think that it, never it, was. It takes place in Yellowstone Park, and there's a music festival or some ridiculous. Nice. 
idea. I don't know. So, no, and I don't wow. know what ever happened with Grizzly One either. So, but the cast is it, it's startling when you when you see it. You'll be like, okay. "Wow, that's quite a cast." It is so. I look forward to seeing this. Yeah, yeah. So, Grizzly Two. There you go. Hey, and then ooh. Night of Grizzly. Hopefully, in next summer, we'll see, or or we'll film next summer. Okay. So, I wish wow, you awesome. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. Well, I will watch it because I do remember that book. I do yeah. remember that book because I well, never mind how old I was when it came out, but I do remember <laughs> that book. I think you my need dad to... had. I think my dad had it on the bookshelf, if I'm not mistaken. He need me to play a dead body. Okay. But I guess. I guess only two women die, so I guess I. Y- yeah. I don't. I don't fit the part. There's a dead poodle. So. Ooh. Oh, I can do that. I can do I, that. I, I, I can play. I can play a possum or a raccoon. I'm very versatile <laughs> yes. that way. Well, we no, I use no, I use the Meisner method when I'm playing a raccoon. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. I don't know what that is, John. Stan, Stan, never mind. Sanford Stanislavski. Meisner. Stanislavski. Uh-huh. Have you never read Uta Hagen? Have you ever never read Uta Hagen? How to play a rabbit? You never. No, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Uta, Uta Hagen could play a forest full of animals. She was brilliant. She was brilliant. Mm-hmm. She, did she do right. animal work where she had people out pretending to be animals to get into their bodies? I think she may have. I don't I know. I think so. How we did that in college. Be sandpaper. You are sandpaper. Who was that? <laughs> I can't remember who that was now. Anyway. We we when we were doing the sighting, there was a day where David Blair, the director, had the the Sasquai. Is that, Sasquai, know, is that the plural? Oh, wow. That's what we'll say. Um, the Sasquai out Just in the backyard doing animal work where they would where they were getting their bodies and you know lumbering mm-hmm. around. Oh, and I was filming out the window with my buddy Adam. So we were laughing so hard. These poor <laughs> actors were just, it was, it was so humiliating, but we, we thought it was just the funniest thing. Yeah. Um, but and now, did you have some famous people in those suits? Like today? Today? The, no. That, that Sasquatch is on uh, Star Trek. They were all <clears throat> wonderful locals that volunteered uh, to be in those hots. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. I would have volunteered to be a Sasquatch. I mean, come yeah. On. Oh, you would have got. You would have had the role. <laughs> <laughs> if no I don't trim my did. body hair, I can pass for a Sasquatch. <laughs> okay. All right, Adam. Well, anyway, right. I want to get your story before you have to go. Okay, stories. Stories. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. You can you can talk as long as you want. So okay. we're going to talk about Adam's embarrassing or bizarre high school. Experience. I don't know if you want to give us the year and and uh, yeah. So and this would be ni- setting nineteen ninety three. Ooh, your favorite band was Nirvana, probably. Was not no per- Pearl Jam. No. Pearl Jam. Nope. No. <laughs> I, I didn't have a favorite band. I would. If you say the Spin to- Doctors, I'm going to come through this computer and bitch slap you. <laughs> Whoever. Whoever my friends were listening to at the time, I was listening to. Okay. That was – well, you could get into music. That's a whole other yeah. segment. I don't mean to dis, um, dis, derail you. But I liked Smashing Pumpkins. Ooh, okay. yeah. And that was around seventh grade. So this was seventh grade. And nice. I was – you know, I was a pretty nerdy, insecure kid. Um. Yep. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> yes, welcome to the show. Good. I was hoping I'd be among friends. Anyway, um, so we. This was PE, which you know I'm sure oh. everyone has, has a physical education story. Um, the teachers were just the you know the, the football coaches, the, the just complete jocks that went got out of high school, went to college to become high school teachers and came back to, to be oh, PE, yes. PE oh, teachers. Yeah. And they would have us do bear crawls. That was our punishment. We were always doing bear crawls. You, do, did you ever I don't have, know what that is. So a bear crawl was you're on your hands and legs and you crawled around the entire um, gymnasium. Wow. So, That's... and you know, it's, 
it's not com- a comfortable way. It's not a way a body really moves. Right. Similar applied to the animal work that <laughs> the Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. There's a theme so, to your life. Right. So, so that was our punishment was we had to do bear crawls. And I remember one day I was in the guy, there was the guy's class on one side of the gym and the girl's class was on the other side of the gym. Yes. And they called up the guy's class and they said, okay, we're going to pick teams, which always was the worst for me. Cause I was always the last to be picked. I was, I was good at soccer. I was pretty fast, but I was not interested. I was not interested in sports. And I, and usually when I was out playing with on teams in, in PE, I was probably looking at flowers or bees or thinking about a movie that I had seen, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. that, that was not an interest. Um, so they pointed to two guys in my class and they said, come on up. The, the two most athletic guys in the whole class. And they had them pick teams. So they're picking the people in the house. Slowly the, the, you know, the crowd starts to move into the, <laughs> the two groups. And I'm left there with my, you know, two of the two guys right. in my class that are probably – the least adept at sports right? or anything. The kid, in the, the kid in the wheelchair and the kid wearing the helmet. I get it. I get it. Okay. <laughs> Not far from the truth. Um, which that brings, that will, will lead into another story later. <clears throat> um, he, he turns to the, this group. They, they stop picking teams at this point. I think there's four of us that have not been picked. And they're just like, we give and up. He says, he says, you four, are in the girls' class the what? rest of the year. What? The teacher said that? Yeah. Well, wait a yeah. second here. This might not be a bad thing because, you know, well, hormones are starting your age. Said, <laughs> wait, this is a punishment? I so No, this wasn't a punishment. <laughs> they just were, they were thinking, okay, let's just put the unathletic kids in with the uh, girls. Will they, where they'll fit in, I guess. Right. I guess. I guess. Um, hmm. So I said, do we get to – does that mean we get to shower in the girls' locker room? Oh, you ruined it. At which when <laughs> I'm doing the bear crawls. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I was in the girls' class. Yeah. For, now, can I you think, say, like, I can't take gym today. I'm having my period. Can you say things like that when you're with the girl? <laughs> it was so strange. And and I think I, I my mom caught wind of it, and she marched down there. And the next PE class, I was back in the boys' class. Wow. wow. So that was strange. That was strange. And but but there was something that these PE teachers would do that th- this came to mind the other day, and I, I just had to tell you guys it's so wild. The there were two kids, and I think the PC term is intellectually disabled, I think yeah. is the word. Mm-hmm. Really. Mm-hmm. Um s- both of them were pretty sweet kids, and they would put them in a ring give them boxing gloves no and make, what? and make them box and we would all form a circle around them and cheer on one or the other oh, and no. oh my inevitably god one of, i know and inevitably oh one of them would, would end up crying or Ugh. or and I, but you know looking back i think how how yes. does this ever happen Oh Adam, I just want to say that, that John is the one that brings sad stories to this podcast. And now you've outdone John. It's because of my mother. It's become my mother's son. No, all I can think about is that South Park episode where Timmy and Jimmy like, yeah. just started duking it out. Duking it out. Well, oh they God. would they would set that up. And I don't mean it to be sad, but I, it's one of those. No, it's very it's sad. Just, yeah. It's very wild. Um, Jesus, if one yeah. of those kids had hurt one or the other, I mean. They, they, would, they would either box or wrestle. That was their thing. Hmm. And, and, you know, one of them had ADHD and one of them was severely intellectually disabled. So it was, wow. a, it was a weird, yeah, that was a, my P years were, were strange. That was a. So do you, have you looked up your, your PE teacher? Is he, oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. Is he I, a wonderful person still? He's around. He's around. <laughs> the only thing that would make that story worse was that if the PE teachers were betting. On the they may have been. That may, have, may been. have been. They may have been. And that may yeah, have been. Yeah, it was a different time. I think back to that, and you know, the, I remember there was bullying. You know, just flagrant bullying going on mm-hmm. in, in oh, PE yeah. class. They would just. It was like a blind eye. 
Well, I'm um, older than you, and and in PE class, there was a the teacher was telling us about what we were going to do, and there was one kid in the back. He was talking, and the teacher told him to be quiet about five times, and he was still talking. And I saw the gym teacher said to the kid in front of him, "Give me your shoe." He gave him his shoe, and he threw that shoe at the kid, hit him right in the head. It was a good shot. <laughs> and let me Again. tell you, let me tell you, that shoe in the head hurt. It, <laughs> John, that wasn't John. John was a good kid, <laughs> well, yeah. as my parents told me. But yeah, that stuff went on, and uh, you, you wouldn't be allowed to throw your shoe at, shoes at kids today. No, no. no. Um, and and then if you for, if you forgot your gym clothes, they had something called pinkies, which were these kind of pink wow. little shorts, and it, they, they were all, to us. They're all about wow. human age. So that was the, wow. I mean, that, like a psychoanalyst would have a field day. Like you have some serious mm-hmm. masculinity issues for somebody right. who was supposed to be so manly, you know. Right. Wow. So no, not, but th- that's a side story. I, I'll tell you my, my embarrassing story. Okay. So, um, I'll, I'll get into my, this, this is my embarrassing story. All right. Um, I, so I, I was in the eighth grade spelling bee and in seventh grade, there was a kid in the spelling bee and he was just cool. You know, he just, didn't give a shit. He was everyone. Everyone was was up. He was up there in the spelling bee. He didn't know how to spell, but he was he hmm. was maintaining. He was staying in in, and he was just doing this cool walk. And I remember just thinking, oh, I wish I was that cool. I wish everyone was everyone in the audience was going. That guy's a cool guy. He's you mean cool walk metaphorically? He wasn't walking around the stage. Yeah, was, doing well, no, he was, no. When he went up there to to do the. Spelling bee, he kind of shuffle up to stay. He, had, he the had a swagger. He had a swagger. A swagger, right. that's it. Yeah, that's the, yeah. He had a swagger. And I remember that. So in eighth grade, I'm like, okay, it is my time to shine. I am I am gonna go up to the spelling to to that microphone and I'm gonna swag. I'm gonna swagger. swagger. <laughs> I will swagger like no one has ever swaggered swagger. before. <laughs> and so I so I kind of I think I'm swaggering <laughs> up to the spelling. <laughs> You're actually doing a bear crawl. And I hear I hear these people kind of in the audience chuckling and you know you know, whispering and I'm thinking, okay, I'm doing it. I got, and, I, and I'm, and I'm, I am making it far in the spelling bee. I was a, I was a pretty good speller, I guess, but I, I had added every time that I spelled a word. That's one more time I can swagger. swagger. Right. So, and so, and so I, um, I made it, I think I was in third or second place and I, rem- and I got out and everyone groaned and cheered for me. And I thought I did it. I am cool now. And I walk off the stage and I have this, a teacher. Uh, my math teacher comes up to me and says, Adam, so what's going on? Why are you limping? <laughs> Is what's, what's wrong? You, you know what's what's going on? Is there something wrong with with your with your feet? What's what's happening? And I I made up this story. Oh, well, my orthotics. So I yeah. my orthotics. Are, <laughs> were, were I've been made. diagnosed with polio. <laughs> I I became I became um, <laughs> stick up the butt guy. Oh <laughs> no! no. You're, you're the oh, guy with that with the stick up his butt. Um, for forever uh, after, or at least for that for, year. For that year. Um, okay. a lot of you should... people, have, a lot of people would say, what, what's going on? You know, or, do you have hemorrhoids or it was, it became a, <laughs> um, in the, in the meantime, I'm, I'm in my art class and I have this girl that is it, it that's sitting at my table. There, there are five of us at our art table and one of my friends kind of confronts me about the the spelling bee is like, what, what was that? What were you doing up there? You know, it was, it was like a weird shuffle gate of an old man. Um, and I confided in him that I was trying to be cool, that I was trying to look cool. And he said, well, it, it did not work. It was a, a disaster. No. Um, 
So Ouch. in in my and he's he this this is one of my really good friends and who's sitting at my my art class table. Also at my art class table is my the love of my life, Jenny. Okay, and I right. Jenny. the world stops with her, and she's the first. She's my first. I mm-hmm. I you know that one girl that's the when you realize wow I like girls and she's the one. Were you and Jenny um, like peas and carrots? <laughs> <laughs> You're, so I did. I didn't have much shot with Jenny. Um, mm-hmm. but not after I that decided, swagger. Not after that swagger, especially <laughs> which was the talk of the table, the art table, and that you actually. spelled you spelled grizzly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I remember I I decided I was going to ask her the, to to dance with me at the the last dance of the year. And I, oh, I sweated bullets over this. Just, mm-hmm. just say, will you save me a dance? For That's all I had to ask. Mm-hmm. And so I got up my courage and I'm at, we're at the art table, the, the f- fifth period or whatever it was where, where I get to sit with her. And I turned to her and I said, Jenny, on the last day of school, and, and everyone turns and looks at me and I oh, just, ouch. I froze. I was I was done. I could not get, will you dance with me? That was not going to come out of my mouth. And so my buddy turns to me and says, but what on the last day of school? And then Jane's like, yeah, what Adam, what? And I said, uh, wear a red (laughs) t-shirt. Whatever. It was just the first thing that popped into my mind. There you and, wear, red, red, wear a red T-shirt so I can spot hole, you in the crowd. Now the hole is beginning to be dug. Uh, and they, what? What do you mean red T-shirt? And my buddy, like, Adam, what? What? I'm like those guys t-shirt? on Star Trek who always get killed first when they go down to the planet, right? So I, mean? I, so I didn't. I just, I, I didn't have an answer for why. And and so I'm I'm just racking my brain. How am I going to get out of this? Where does where do you go with where where do you go from wear a red T-shirt on the last day of school? Where can you possibly go? Well, we could say wear a white skirt that matches it. And you mm-hmm. look very beautiful. Yeah. I yeah, that, there you go, Tim. You you solve my problem. But, you know, I wish you were there at eighth grade. Solve the problem <laughs> thirty years too late. <laughs> <laughs> but so I. The, what pops into my mind is, and which comes out, is it's for the sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's funny. That's a good. That's a good well, recovery. Not, gotta, nobody laughed. Nobody was, laughed. What? It was. Just, it was just like mm, that. Okay, weird. Just got way weirder. <laughs> Okay, now hold on a second here. <laughs> you can't jo- joke about a sacrifice, <laughs> but they'll let the two mentally challenged kids duke it out with boxing yeah. gloves. What, what is wrong? Right? <laughs> what is Our- wrong? What is wrong with you people? What's going on here? <laughs> it's Montana. It's uh, oh, oh, okay. There you it's go. Um, it's, it's- but there's a twist to this story, and that is later in the year, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a week or so later we went on this school trip together, which is the Montana history trip. And they take buses of kids all around to these historical places in Montana. And it it was one of my favorite memories from any of my schooling. And I remember Jenny and I, we got pretty close during that trip and she kind of got to know me better. And she said to me, Hey, we should go to a movie when we get back. Ooh. And I said, okay. So, so now the red t-shirt thing that that whole episode is it seems to be in the past okay and i was of course beside myself um and excited and so when i got back i immediately the first movie i could say i you know the first movie i could take her to i said let's go to oh this movie's playing schindler's list Oh no! Oh wow! So that so we, so I took her to Schindler's List, and I was so into her. I don't. I mean, you didn't remember the movie. I don't remember the movie, and I remember you left the movie. You're like, wasn't that funny? 
Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> what a comedy. What a great yeah. comedy. Spo- spoiler uh, alert, the Nazis lose at the end. But anyway, go right. ahead. <laughs> well, and and I remember during that, this is one of those weird eighth grade things that is so strange looking back on it. But at the time, it was the one of the greatest moments of my life. And I had a red licorice and I was eating this licorice and she said, is it, is it your licorice guy? I said, yeah, I have a piece. And she said, no, I, I want yours. And she reached in my mouth and took the licorice and ate it, wow. which to oh. me was like kissing. It was right. like, oh yeah. Where in my eighth grade brain, I was like, oh, okay. You exchange this, bodily fluids. There you go. Yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. So, so it, and, and then I think that I like, you know, looking back, it's so strange to even say that that happened. But I guess in eighth grade, anything goes. What did you say? Were you just, did you just act cool? And like, I was okay. in shock. I think I took it out of her mouth back. <laughs> no. And this is during wow. Schindler's list. And then she <laughs> took it out of your mouth again. And then you're starting like fighting, 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 fighting over eighth grade in Schindler's yes, list. Let me just, I got to take a swig of drink here. Just one second. I know. It's eighth grade kissing. Um, Woo, well, not. So, I I do believe by the end of that movie we were both crying at the end of the movie. Thankfully, so so we did eventually get into the movie. Um, but I remember the licorice more. But were you crying because you were fighting over that piece of licorice you kept sticking in each other's that mouth? Was, or? That was <laughs> no, I was cr- maybe crying with joy from that. Yes. Um, so I immediately told my friend who immediately teased her about it. Oh, no. and, that, and that was the, that was it. That, that was the last it. time we, I think that may have been the, one of the last times we hung out. So that, that's my, that's my story. The there, next, the next fall after that, when everybody was gathering stones in a pile uh, uh-huh. for, for harvest time and picking names. Sacrifice. Yeah. She, <laughs> her, her name got picked and she's like, damn it. Damn I am the damn. sacrifice. By the way, Midsummer is one of my top, top 10 also. I love yes. that because it's, it's set in Sweden and I used to live in Sweden. Yes, I what love a movie. Uh, right. that. But what movie. about did did you like Hereditary better? I did. Or? I did. I loved Hereditary, but Midsummer is Hereditary mm-hmm. is, is about is, it that yeah sticks out. Uh, maybe maybe it was also my discovery of um, of uh, the actress. Uh, oh, um, she's in she's in yeah. something else, and I forget Hold her name. I'll, I'll think of it. But um, yeah, my wife does not like super scary movies, so I luckily yeah. saw Hereditary when she was out of town, and I'm like, "Well, Jean, you can never watch this." Yeah, no, she mm-hmm. can never watch that, and and yeah. Midsummer as well. But uh, she watched that. Oh, she did watch Midsummer. Okay. I mean, come on, the Hereditary is like halfway through the movie. I was like, Ugh, I don't want to see the rest of this. This isn't the end. Yeah, it's, I did uh, want to see it, but it's like I, I never want to watch it again. Yeah, it's, it's Florence Pugh, and and I was so amazed by her performance in that movie it's beyond mm-hmm. it's beyond good it she what she was the, other, the person i yeah, mean yeah i was i was amazed i was amazed by her performance i thought she mm-hmm. i thought she, she, she did an awesome an Academy Award. but i just to get back to jenny i wanted to say actually <laughs> kudos to jenny i mean florence Pugh, yeah 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 florence Pugh is great in the hereditary blah 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 but getting back to jenny I mean, kudos to her because, like, if she didn't like Schindler's List, you know, then I kind of would have been like, like, what kind of girl is this that doesn't yeah. like Schindler's List? You know, she wanted to go what see did, Speed or yeah. something, you know, because Keanu Reeves is so cute. Um, <laughs> but I thought when you picked Schindler's List, I, maybe I was giving your eighth grade self a little more credit. I thought right, you picked yeah. one of the longest movies that you could spend time alone with her. That was not factored in. But that, yeah, in hindsight, absolutely. I, yeah, now if you could say no, I, this, now if you could say no, this is, I, I, this is how I figured it out. And we could edit it back in and make you sound like the smartest eighth grader that ever was. <laughs> actually, actually, I watched, um, it was an homage to Curse of Bigfoot. <laughs> 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 oh, and and one more question about the story. Do you remember yeah. the word that you got that you got uh, booted out of the spelling beyond? No, oh no, no oh. recollection. Oh. 
Mm. I wish there was a my, video. I wish I wish we filmed more stuff back then. Mine I would have liked to see how I actually walked. Yours was what? Mine was onomatopoeia. Oh, man. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do That's it. That's cruel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I wish I knew. And I, you know... No, that's good that it doesn't haunt wasn't, you. Wasn't that the same summer Waterworld came out? Why didn't you take her to Waterworld? Come on. Well, because it was my, first of <laughs> because all, it was they, Because they were waiting probably, for the Postman to come out. They didn't want to watch two Kevin <laughs> Costner movies in the same year. There was probably one movie playing. Right. So, and it was Schindler's List. So, Whitefish was a little hip place, if I remember, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it was. I, I mean, it is. I mean, it's crazy it how it's it's just exploded even more. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's a it's a cool town. It's a cool town. Yeah, I forget who I talked to that, <laughs> when I toured and met everybody. It's it's a bit of a blur. Mm-hmm, right. So, but we it was had a, a nice dinner. We, you and I had a, we had a nice dinner at the lodge. I remember we had dinner and they were filming The Bachelor like nearby. You, you guys oh, were totally, talking about yeah. that. Oh, that so, yeah, but that was I, the I beginning that. of the end. And then you told me to wear a red shirt the next day. Yeah, so right. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we, it's like, what's up yeah. with that? <laughs> <laughs> the next few, but. Okay. Well, because uh, I really appreciate you spending time with us. I love yes, movies. Yes, thank you, Adam. And I that love, was very kind of you. Oh, I, I love, love to talk about movies. Anytime, anytime you want an extra voice. Okay. Maybe think. we'll do a movie and have you on again. That would maybe, be fun. I mean, maybe I'm sorry, John. Our guest, maybe you can be our guest reviewer for Grizzlies too. Perfect. Oh, maybe. Okay. I haven't. Well, I haven't actually seen it yet. I just. Yeah, we got to watch it. I okay. bought it though. So. John has to watch the sighting. I mean, he couldn't have been. I'm, well, I'm if, sorry. I, if I hadn't had to watch, oh, if no. I watched the triangle the second time, I would have watched the sighting. I will watch no, the sighting. Well, I, no, no big deal. No big. Deal. No, I will I, watch I, it. I appreciate you being here, and honestly, I think the sighting is a good movie, a good screenplay. Uh, I think I don't want to spoil it too much for John. Oh, yeah, no. thank, thank and, I, hey. and I absolutely love the triangle. Oh, thank you both. That's nice. That's right. This is a great show. It was a fantastic show. And if you would like to send Seti Bimco some uh, listener feedback, it's Seti Bimco with the E at gmail.com. Uh, and we are on Twitter at Seti Bim, Instagram, Seti underscore Bimco. Follow us in those places. Yeah. And oh, so we're going to watch a movie next week and not have a guest as we rotate our uh, agenda. Who, what, and, and you're picking a movie because I picked you Psychomania. Pick, you picked Psychomania, which was wonderful. And I am willing to pay for, and I think it's only $2, is Trog, the final okay. film of Miss Joan Crawford. Kind of since. Psychomania was George Sanders' last film. Okay. And You're trying to steal the movie mixtape uh, idea. I'm afraid Dirk and Marcy are going to sue us. They're going <laughs> to take us into some courts. Of course, I don't know what the jurisdiction would be. You're in Brooklyn. I'm in the Finger Lakes. Marcy's in Pittsburgh. Dirk's in Liverpool. I don't know. Maybe the International yeah. Court in The Hague. That's true. In the Netherlands. Maybe that's where this would have to be decided. They- yeah, that's going to be a all, long, between all the long war, drawn out lawsuit. Yeah, between all the war criminal trials, they'll squeeze us in right between. Right. And next next week, I'll pick Pirates, which is Marty Feldman's last film. So, oh, not a good film, I don't. But you know what? Sometimes I, you know, it's like when uh, when when Adam was talking about. He's like, oh, well, that's a really bad film. Don't watch. And I'm like thinking, what's wrong with bad films? I love bad <laughs> films. Well. Anyway. True. Anyway, Mm -hmm. great show. Uh, Yeah. All right. I will talk. Oh, we're going to watch. If you want to watch Trog, it's cost you two bucks. It's going to cost you two bucks. Two two American dollars. Not Canadian dollars, but two American dollars I am willing to spend on Miss Joan Crawford. You can see Abba the Movie for $11. For $11. (laughs) Which is money better well spent. But. Which is money better well spent, but not as expensive as the films of Mr. Adam Pittman. But that's okay. You know, I was just like, I, I, I had a, I had a, wait a second here. Wait a second here, Mr. Pittman. You're charging more than Abba the movie. <laughs> How dare he? How dare he? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Alexander Skarsgård? Swedish reference. Swedish reference. <laughs> yes. 
Good joke. Good joke. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) All right. We're done. We're done. We'll see you next week. Watch out for grizzlies, Tim. Seti Binko is a podcast by Tim Hamilton and John Kelly. Produced by Miss Lee. Music by Tim Hamilton. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party line. It's a party line.